Welcome to Swag, some wisdom and gear from college admission leaders. Today we're joined by Matt McGann, Dean of Admission and Financial Aid at Amherst College. Matt, I want to start by giving you an opportunity to share your elevator pitch and an overview for why students might want to consider Amherst. Thanks for having me, Brennan. It's great to be here. Amherst College, it's an amazing historic place. It's an intimate community of people who are really passionate about learning. They're really excited about coming to understand and discuss and uh, debate and come to uh, really learn in a community of like-minded individuals from a, a diverse set of backgrounds. People here love learning. The classes are small and all taught by faculty who only teach undergraduate students. When you talk to students here, they tell you how much they love the mentorship, the teaching, the small classroom advising, the mentorship, uh, all of that kind of stuff is, is really front and center here. Um, the, this is also a campus that uh, brings together the best of students from across the country and around the world. We're very proud of our racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic diversity, our diversity of thought, uh, and diversity on many other dimensions. So when you come to Amherst, uh, you'll be learning from a group of peers as well that can share their different ideas, their different perspectives on the world, which makes this a very exciting place to learn. And finally, on the uh, we have very strong uh, career uh, advising. Uh, we want your education to be something that will help you to really make an impact on the world. And, and through four-year close-knit uh, career uh, advising, we help our students uh, get uh, to the kind of outcomes they desire, graduate school, medical school, law school, careers and professions uh, across the spectrum, and uh, hopefully have an impact across their entire lives using the kind of uh, learning that they've had on this liberal arts college campus. Well, I'm convinced, sign me up. <laughs> um, so I, I wanna to turn to our lightning round of questions now. And um, I'm just going to shoot some questions at you and um, going to ask you for some uh, brief responses. All so, right, I'm ready. Um, all right. So to begin with, uh, what is one unique program offered at your school? Yeah, Amherst, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is that Amherst uh, is partnered with a number of museums. We run the Emily Dickinson Museum, as well as the Folger Shakespeare Library in Washington, DC. So uh, if you are a big fan of those particular authors or just really love uh, writing and history uh, and literature in general, the opportunity to uh, work uh, in internships and fellowships and you know even regular jobs in those museums I think is really pretty cool. Uh, the, the Emily Dickinson Museum is just across the street from campus. It's her home. You can be in her bedroom where she wrote most of her poems and the Folger Shakespeare Library contains the largest collection of Shakespeare's first folios um, and a whole bunch of other really amazing Shakespeare stuff. So those are some really cool places that our students can get to be a part of. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Great. Um, how about one fun tradition at Amherst? Yeah, oh, there's uh, lots to choose from. Uh, I mean, I think for me, it would have to be the biggest little game in America, the Amherst Williams uh, football game, which has been happening since the 1880s. Uh, these two historic rivals to the great liberal arts colleges come together each fall uh, for not only football, but also community. Uh, it's really wonderful to see the generations of liberal arts graduates from Amherst and Williams come together each fall, whether it's on our campus or theirs, uh, and catch up and share stories and yeah, root for the football team as well. Uh, but it is one of the greatest college community events that I've gotten to experience. I love it, and I'm looking forward to it being back this year. And a whole lot of purple, I imagine. Whole lot of purple. A Amherst is purple and white, and that other school, they're purple and yellow. Yellow, really? <laughs> All right, we'll take it. How about your favorite spot on campus? Yeah, it would have to be Memorial Hill. Uh, Amherst is... Uh, the college is on the highest 
point uh, in the town of Amherst, uh, and it o overlooks from Memorial Hill onto the Holyoke range of mountains. Uh, it is just a beautiful spot to uh, sit and uh, see nature. Um, I walk there as often as I can. I just walked there last night, and there are a whole bunch of people sitting on Adirondack chairs, taking in the sunset, taking in the majestic mountains, and uh, it's it's such a lovely spot. That's number one spot you got to go when you come to Amherst College. I imagine a great view of Mount Greylock as well. That, the, Mount Greylock is closer to Williams. We we don't talk about Mount Greylock here. <laughs> okay. um, so uh, let's take this a little uh, more macro. Uh, I'd love to hear what your what you see as the greatest myth about college admission. Yeah, um, you know, as as a first generation college graduate myself, um, I you know I I really want to make sure that students uh, of all backgrounds know that the kinds of life changing education that you can get at places like Amherst are available to you, and I hope that students um, will uh, will look at schools that are going to be a, a, a strong academic fit for them and give them the supports that that they need. Um, campuses like like Amherst are, you know, it's it's a long ago thing that it was just for for the elite or the wealthy. Uh, today, campuses like Amherst serve a broad spectrum of students and make it affordable for a broad spectrum of students. So um, I, I, I try to find those places that are going to be your fit, um, regardless of, uh, of uh, your family circumstances, because uh, colleges are looking for you and uh, want you as a part of the community. That's a great point. Thanks. What should, um, what, is, what is one truth about college admission along those same lines? Yeah, uh, I, I think um, that in an era where people can be so focused on numbers, whether they're test scores or GPAs, that at the heart of the admission process at places like Amherst, it really is about the person, that this is a, a, a whole person review process where to the best that we can through this imperfect instrument that is a college application, we're trying to understand you and uh, what you would bring to our community and what our community can give to you. We don't see you as uh, someone who is just a set of statistics, but rather as an individual person who can really make a difference and can really get a lot from our education. So it's a very personal process. That's great, thanks. Um, and, and you as a first generation college student might be best kind of um, set up to, to respond to this question. Um, what's the, what, what's, what should students know about affordability and access in college admission? Yeah, um, colleges for the most part want to make our educations affordable and accessible. And if you're finding obstacles and barriers, I would pick up the phone or drop an email to the admission or the financial aid office and see what ways there might be. So, you know, right off the bat, you've got application fees at many colleges, but fee waivers are a, a big part of uh, things. Uh, there are financial aid programs uh, that will uh, ensure at many colleges that you will get the financial aid that you need. At Amherst College, we meet uh, financial need only with grant and not uh, with, with loans. Um, and that is, uh, that's a pretty exciting uh, way to do financial aid. And this is the, how it works at quite a few colleges. Uh, so it does mean doing your research. Uh, which is a theme uh, I'll maybe uh, do a little teaser we might come back to in a little while. Uh, but if, if you do your research, I think you're going to be able to find that you can find the right financial fit, as well as the right academic and social fit. Um, and you know, part of that can also be using net price calculators, which I think are a terrific tool uh, to help understand school affordability as well. So it does mean some work 
Um, but I think that you'll find that we want to be helpful from information on websites to net price calculators to programs and policies that are really trying to make uh, this process accessible to you. Great, thanks. Okay, final question. What is the best question a student should ask on a campus tour and what's your answer? Oh, the best question. Uh, this, this has really put me on the spot. I got to come up with number one. You know, I, I would say, um, you know, I, I would want to know uh, about the, the relationship between students and faculty. I'd like to know from students, you know, how do they interact with their professors? Uh, what are those relationships like? Um, is it, you know, do they, do they have those interactions with the, the mentors, the advisors that are there, and at what depth uh, and in what settings? So for a classroom, what are the actual classrooms you're learning in? At Amherst, we don't have giant lecture halls. All of our classrooms are pretty small, and that's the style of learning that we do. Uh, at, you know, at Amherst also, we don't have uh, graduate students, so all of the attention of the faculty is focused on uh, the on you as an undergraduate student. And really, I think that 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 teacher student relationship uh, is the primary mechanism uh, through which you really get a lot of value uh, out of out of college in addition to those relationships you have with your peers. So it's about the people and how can you develop those relationships with people, starting with the faculty. If you get another question, then it would be about the community with your peers and how do you build that community and how does that come up? But I don't want to cheat. You said just one. <laughs> That's great. Thanks. Well, that's the wisdom, and now it's time for the gear. Oh, so wow. Matt has uh, Matt and his team have um, sent us some swag, so we are going to reach into the swag bag to see what you have uh, sent us. Uh, a bag within a bag. Purple, as we've talked about. Purple, as we've talked about. We have the Amherst College tea. Oh, I can wear so, it. So yeah, how can you, how can you go wrong with a t-shirt? Um, you know, definitely the number one favorite thing from a bookstore. And you'll note there that it was uh, advertising not just Amherst College but our bicentennial. We were founded in the year 1821, and as we record this, it is the year 2021. So this is a pretty historic year to be a part of Amherst, celebrating that history and all that we've done in those two centuries. That's great. And you sent us a book. Yeah, and uh, this book is not only great advice, and I'm really happy to be able to donate this to the cause, uh, but also it's by an Amherst alum. Uh, Ron Lieber is the Your Money columnist in the New York Times uh, and a fantastic member of our community of alumni and alumni. His book, uh, The Price You Pay for College, is great insights for families hoping to understand how affordability and access work at colleges, what kind of research you can do to make sure that you're going to get the value that you need out of your college experience. Uh, it's a good plug. You can, you can buy it at an independent bookstore. You can pick it up from your local library. Uh, Ron Lieber, lots of good insights uh, for families going through the college process. That's great. Thanks. And we will um, be giving this. Matt and his team have um, kindly offered to give this. We're going to be donating it to a college access um, organization. Um, but Matt, thanks for the wisdom and for the gear. We will see you next time on Swag from the College Guidance Network.